Greetings, friends, and welcome back to Worship with the Longmeadow Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in Auburn, New Hampshire. If you're joining with me for the first time, my name is Reverend Ruth Gallat. I'm the pastor of the Longmeadow Church, and I come to YouTube twice each week. I'm here every Sunday, as I am today, with a worship service for the entire church family, and I also come every Wednesday with a special message for the children of our church, and I'm so glad that you are joining with us this day. Our church is currently meeting in person at 9.30 and on Zoom at 11 o'clock, as well as coming here to YouTube. And we are so glad that you are part of our wider church community. Um, as we uh, prepare for our time of worship, I just want to let you know that we begin with prayer each time, and then it is we have scripture and then a brief reflection on that scripture. And we welcome you to participate in at whatever time works for you, in whatever way works for you. But we hope that you feel uplifted and supported in your faith journey as you walk with us. If you would like to support the ongoing ministries of the Longmeadow Congregational Church, I've provided an address in the description down below where you can send any offerings of support, but we are glad that you are here and engaging with us as we walk together. In our um, prayer each week, <clears throat> we offer up our thanksgiving and ask for God's blessing on our siblings in Christ and churches throughout the New Hampshire Council of Churches and uh, name a few of them each week. Uh, we also, uh, a couple of years ago, I started uh, a, a tradition of also including each week a specific ministry within our church so that we can really support each other, come alongside each other, and offer our prayers both of thanksgiving for what they have done as well as support for their ongoing ministry. This week, I am uh, inviting you to pray for a new faith formation class that is going to begin tomorrow on Monday, the 25th of September. Last year, we offered a year-long Introduction to the Bible course, and this year we'll be offering something a little different, an Introduction to Theology course. You can read more about it in our newsletter, but I ask that um, you... Pray for all who will be teaching the class, as well as all those who will be learning together, uh, that we may all receive enlightenment, new understandings, and encouragement from each other. If you'd like more information, you can contact me, and I would gladly share that with you. It will be meeting on Monday evenings at 7 o'clock. I also wanted to raise up and ask for your prayers uh, as we hear more about the rise in COVID numbers. We have, over the past few weeks, uh, had a number of cases, four specifically cases of people testing positive within our congregation. No one has been hospitalized, and for that we give thanks. Some have been more ill than others. Um, but I just want to ask that you hold in prayer all those who are ill, as well as support all those who have concerns and always to be respectful of each person's choice about boundaries and about precautions as we enter this season with hope. We are going to continue to worship in all of the different ways that we are doing now, and we invite you to participate in whatever way is comfortable for you, and we give thanks for that. And so now, my friends, I invite you to be with me as we begin our time of worship with prayer. As we sing our praise to you, O Lord, we remember the multitude of blessings you have given us. We are mindful of the ways in which you have lifted us up when we were, had fallen low and have been generous with your love, your forgiveness, and your blessings. Be with us this day as we gather to hear your word for our lives. On this day, we give you thanks for your constant presence and your desire to reach out to us, to reveal yourself to us, and to have us share in the joy of life in your light. This week, we ask your blessing on those who seek to understand you better and to share their faith with others in our first introductory theology course. Bless the seeking, the questions, the doubts, the courage, and the sharing we will learn to, as we learn together and come closer to you in the process. We thank you also for the generosity of all who have 
donated in the past few weeks to the religious response to hunger and the blessing of working with our siblings who gather in houses of worship in the greater Manchester area, working together to feed your beloved children. We will deliver our donations uh, along with the donations of all of the other houses of worship this coming Tuesday at Temple Adathia Sharon, and we ask that you bless all who gather and all who have donated. We thank you for the generosity. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. We thank you for the generosity of all. And my, my dearest Lord, we ask for your blessing on our siblings in Christ, in churches throughout New Hampshire. We are blessed to know each other. We are blessed whenever we come together. And we are blessed to hold each other up each week. And so this week we especially ask for a blessing on the Episcopal Church of the Messiah in North Woodstock, the Northwood Congregational Church UCC, the Nottingham Community Church Unitarian Universalist, the United Congregational Church of Orford, the Water Village Community Church Ossipee, the Second Congregational Church Ossipee, the First Congregational Church Pelham. We give you thanks for the ministries of all these churches and ask that you bless them as they continue to share your word and your light and your love in the world. Lord of justice and mercy, we quibble over perceived little injustices. We look around us and see mercy being offered to others when we feel that they have done little to merit such treatment. Our world is in such bad shape. There are true injustices and horrible situations in which peace and mercy seem to be dim and distant hopes. Give us eyes to see where justice and com compassion may be offered. Give us hearts to reach out to those who are new in faith and who struggle in life. Enable and strengthen each one of us in your service that we may offer peace and hope to others, not counting the cost, but sharing the wealth of your mercy and your love. Lord, on this day we pray for all those who are ill, receiving treatment, or awaiting test results. We especially hold up this week those in our congregation, our town, and across the country who have recently been diagnosed with COVID. We pray for their speedy and uneventful recovery. We pray in gratitude for those who work in our health care system and for the resources available to us all. May we continue to be supportive and compassionate with each other as we continue this road together. And Lord, we hold up to you all those who have died and those who are grieving, for we know that you hold each one tenderly. We pray for those who are struggling in this time with concerns and burdens of which we have no knowledge. Help us to always be your disciples with open hearts, generous spirits, and compassionate souls that others also have needs, even when unseen by us, and understanding that your loving care for them does not diminish your loving care for us. Lord, who lifts us up, reside in our hearts this day, we pray. Help us to listen closely for your word to us. Remind us that you are always with us throughout all of our lives. Give us confidence in your presence so that we may have the courage to bring to you our entire hearts and listen closely as you bring your light to illuminate our way and guide us as we listen for you in the silence. <clears throat> God of grace and mercy, whether we are lifelong laborers or new arrivals in the vineyard, we know you value us just as we are. God of the last, God of the first, God of all those in between, we trust that you have heard our prayers as we seek your presence in our lives and in a world in need. Guide us to follow you ever nearer as we join together in the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. 
Amen. Today we are in the Gospel of Matthew, now in chapter 20, and I'll be reading to you verses 1 through 16. That's Matthew 20, 1 to 16. For the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his field. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. Then he went out again about noon, and about three o'clock he did the same. At about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired around five o'clock came, <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, my computer went. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last have worked only one hour, and you have made them as equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. This, my friends, is the Word of God. Last week I mentioned in the introduction to my sermon that whenever I preach on forgiveness, it is such a powerful topic that I invariably have at least a couple of people approach me in the days and weeks to follow asking if I was specifically speaking to or about them and wanting to engage in conversation about it. And this week was no different. Immediately following the service, I had several people say that it had got them thinking. Some even coming to ask me specific questions during our fellowship time. And I was glad that I had more than the usual amount of time between services to give me time for these wonderful moments of wondering and engagement. In the days that followed, I received both emails and telephone calls from people who continued to have questions and wanting to discuss the topic more in depth. Now, this did not surprise me, as I said, because this is one of those topics in our faith journey that challenge the status quo, the way we are acculturated to think and to believe, and it just doesn't fit with the rest of our lives and our education. It didn't surprise me at all. I've gone through this before. And to take it one step further, I would also like to say that it absolutely thrilled me to have people think, question, wonder, challenge, argue, ponder, the teachings of Jesus is, in my belief, a sign of a mature and a courageous faith. And that's a really, really exciting thing for a pastor to see. This week's text will, I hope, also provoke you as much to question and wonder, challenge, argue, and ponder the challenging counterculture some might even find it to be the offensive grace of God. In fact, this entire section of Matthew's Gospel that we're in right now, from this chapter all the way through to the entry into Jerusalem, are pretty challenging to our way of thinking and will probably lead to more questions and pondering. At least, I hope it will. The story I just read to you, Jesus tells a parable about 
abundant, unwarranted, and in the case of the vineyard workers, unwanted generosity as an illustration of what the kingdom of heaven looks like. That illustrates quite provocatively that the ways of the kingdom are not our ways. Now, I'd like to take a moment here to, as an aside, to talk about the function of parables as a teaching tool. It's not something we often use now, but it's something Jesus used a lot. And it's always understood that these are not factual stories. These are not real people or situations in history that Jesus is describing, but rather he's using them to illustrate a broad theme. And it would be easy for us to view them as allegories. That is to say that this person in the story stands for that, or this situation stands for that situation. In this, in this story, we are discussing, some scholars have said that the vineyard owner in the story is God, the laborers who worked all day are the Jews, who were mad that the newcomers to the fields, the Gentiles, those who were hired in the last hour were getting the same rewards as the ones who have been faithful and laboring all day. Other scholars have said that this is an allegory for the modern church with the lifelong members being upset that the newcomers were doing things differently. But when it comes to parables, my friends, we must always be very cautious about oversimplified explanations, particularly when it leads to turning some into good guys and others into bad guys. Jesus isn't talking to just one group to say, you have it all wrong, you are bad. Rather, he is speaking to people of varying experiences to say, I'm speaking to all of you. This is the way it is for everyone. When we hear parables, we're not meant to get it right away. We're meant to linger in these stories for a while, to turn them over in our minds, and to see where we connect in the story, not just to the good guys, but also where do we connect with the bad guys. We are meant to ponder, to think, to question, to wonder, not just about good and bad, but about how and when and who, about growth in us and about grace in God. Last week it was about forgiveness, unearned, possibly undeserved, but still given. This week, it is about the generosity and the mercy of God in ways that are foreign to us, possibly even offensive to us, but still given. The big picture is that God is bigger than our cultural norms and expectations. God's view is far wider than what we view and desire. It's not about Superman's catchphrase, truth, justice, and the American way. It's about God's way. And God's ways are not our ways. And in these parables, stories, and teachings that we are hearing in this season, we will be challenged over and over again by a Jesus who is not here to support our chosen way of life and worldview, but is here calling us to a new view, a realm of God view. So for the next few weeks, I guess my advice is going to be Buckle up. It's going to be a bumpy ride. In today's story, it would be easy to view what the vineyard owner is doing as foolish and really, really bad business management. If this is the way that things are done, why would anybody come in on time tomorrow? But this story isn't about good business practices or business practices in any way. And you'll note that the vineyard workers' complaints are not that the owner is being stingy or that they want more money. They never say any of that. Their complaint is, you treated them, those other people, as equal to us. We were happy to see how you treated us. We thought that was good until they were treated well also. 
How dare you pay them as much? And going back over Jesus' teachings that we have heard in the past few weeks, the questions could also be, how dare you forgive them as much? How dare you stand with them as much? How dare you love them as much? It all goes back to, how dare you eat with tax collectors and sinners? Why do you hang out with that sort of person when we, good upstanding church folks, have so much more to offer you? What I really love about this story, though, what I really love, in fact, about all the gospel, what I love about the entire Bible, this wonderful story of God's love and for and relationship with us, is that Jesus is okay with all that. Jesus is okay with being questioned like that. Jesus doesn't condemn the vineyard workers for complaining. Instead, he tells of God's generosity and mercy. God didn't smite the Israelites for murmuring and complaining in the desert for 40 years. He fed them and he guided them. God didn't walk away from the petulant and pouting Jonah who was so mad at God for forgiving Nineveh. That was the other scripture that text that was recommended as a possibility for today. Jonah got so angry at God saying, I knew you were a gracious and compassionate God. I knew it. Slow to anger and abounding in love. A God who relents from sending calamity. And he went off to sulk under a bush. God didn't say, well, be that way and walk off. God stayed with Jonah, continuing to teach and to guide and through it all to love. It's a lot to take in this mysterious, challenging, and for some downright offensive, unconditional love of God. But let's do just that. Let's not rush to the right answer, but instead let us be provoked to question, to wonder, to challenge, argue, ponder the challenging, countercultural, amazing grace of God. Beginning in October, I would like to invite any of you who are in the area and would like to join with me for a new variation on Dinner Church, where we will do just that. We will ponder, we will ask questions, we will share experiences, and wonder together about God's amazing grace. No preparation will be required, no long-term commitment requested, just a series of simple dinners where we can sit around a table together and spend time sharing our thoughts and questions about some of these big topics Jesus is teaching in this season. The first one will be on last week's big topic of forgiveness, and we will go from there. You'll be able to read more about this in our October newsletter, and you can join us for just one or as many gatherings as you like. Until then, my friends, keep pondering, keep listening, keep questioning. God can take it. God's tough. God welcomes it, in fact, and God will stay there with you in the wonder, loving you through it. Thanks be to God. I thank you, my friends, for joining with me here and being part of our church family. I hope that you have a wonderful week. I hope that you take time to ponder, to wonder about God's amazing love for us that so angered Jonah and perplexed the vineyard workers. Just sit in it, ponder it, live in the wonder and go into the world knowing that you will be loved through all your questions and all your doubts. You will be loved. Until we meet again, my friends, go in peace and return in joy. Thanks for joining me here. Goodbye. <laughs>